Welcome to Manufacturing Talk Radio. My name is Tim Grady. I'm here with my co-host, Lou Wise. Good morning. We're sitting comfortably at Fabtech 2015 at the McCormick Place in Chicago, Illinois, at, at the uh, what I call the fabulous Fabtech show. There's 750,000 square feet of exhibits here at the show. There'll be about 50,000 people who walk the show, meeting with, uh, oh, uh, they think 4,000 employees of exhibitors. So it is a massive show, lots of great information here. And we ran across something yesterday that we wanted to introduce to you today. We ran across a new magazine that fits a particular niche. It's called the FF Journal, and we have Michael D. Alexander here, who is the Vice President and Publisher of that magazine. We're gonna give uh, uh, some real time to this because this is an important magazine that fits a, a great spot in the industry. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Sure Thank you thing. very much. Give us a little background on FF Journal. How did it come to be? FF Journal was started in 2004, and we felt that there was a niche to be filled um, that the other magazines weren't filling. We're privately owned companies, so we have an independent voice uh, in terms of how we report on manufacturing, specifically fabricating and forming as it relates to metal. Okay. Uh, we've got a circulation of 45,000 metal fabricators and end users. We're a monthly publication. Also have a website, ffjournal.net. Um, and we feel, based on the response that we've received since we started the magazine in 2004, that that niche has been filled. Uh, kind of unique, uh, independent voice of what's happening in metal fabricating. So the magazine's doing well? It's doing very well, considering the industry. Uh, it's a very volatile industry. Right. Uh, as the economy goes, metalworking goes. Uh, we've had some ups and downs lately in the last couple of years. The challenge has been how do you come up with new products to fit the needs of what the market is asking for. Right. So it's an evolving business for us. We also are dealing with the internet, which has changed publishing considerably as far as print is concerned. Why don't you give us your URL address for the magazine for our listeners? www.ffjournal.net. And then the other magazine we publish is Modern Metals, which is www.modernmetals.com. Now, you had mentioned something that's quite unique about FF Journal. You're speaking to a different audience with a different voice. You're talking to the younger generation that's coming into the industry, is that right? Correct, Tim. Yeah, what we're trying to do is we understand, and we've done surveys over the past couple of years, and I don't think it's a surprise to anybody in the industry that there's a severe shortage of skilled workers right. entering in the, into this right. industry. There's also the perception that publishers have to battle with in terms of the industry being dirty, grimy. It's metalworking. Um, we're trying to educate the industry more in tune with the younger generation is this is a very vibrant industry. There's a lot of creativity. Not only that, but you can make a good living in this industry very. by graduating from vocational trade schools. You know, four-year four college isn't for everybody. Right. And what universities or trade schools are doing, what other organizations are doing is they realize the fact that college isn't for everybody. They've stepped up and they're starting to train kids on welding how to weld, uh, how to work CNC, um, a variety of different machine, uh, machines. So we're trying to provide the next generation with a vehicle where they can go to show the creativity of what's going on in the industry and hopefully attract more skilled workers. Because I travel the country and I can't tell you whether it's an OEM I'm talking to, or Chop Chop, one thing consistent that I hear all the time, and I've been hearing it for years, fellas, is the need for skilled workers. Yep. It's a very, very yep. tough, tough thing to find the right kind of workers to take this industry to the next, minute or next generation. Right. Tim and I have done a fair amount of shows uh, on this particular topic, and one of the things that keep coming up to us, and I guess it hasn't made it to those in, in the know to help promote uh, younger uh, kids to go to a vocational or technical school, and that's the parents. The parents are proud as punch to have their kid go to college, get a degree in social work, and earn $32,000 a year, and as opposed to getting the parents to understand what manufacturing is like today, because they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. All they know is that I want my son or daughter 
first generation, maybe second generation, they got to go to college and earn buckets. No, you're right. And I think that if you look at the ex expense of a four-year college today, oh, yeah. it's no longer practical. You right. know, in, in, and you in, can't get a job. When you can't get a job. And I don't know what they're teaching at these universities, but <laughs> they're not preparing these kids. No. And again, I go back to the, to the comment earlier that four-year college isn't for everybody. No. And not. there's a lot of opportunity. If you look at the opportunities in manufacturing in this country right now versus other sectors, finance, other forms of business, the real opportunities exist in manufacturing. Absolutely. Parents don't know this. Right. Uh, to, a, to a large degree, kids don't know this. Uh, so it's a, it's a viable career that pays very, very well. For instance, as a certified welder out of vocational school, you can make close to six figures. I mean, I hear the figure 75000 a year, yeah. $65,000 a year. Kids don't know that. Their perception is metalworking is my grandfather's industry. It's right. dirty, it's grimy, and probably not for me. This country had better get its act together and they better pick up the pace and start. And it goes in tandem with the fact that manufacturing has left this country. Yeah, sure. So you got a scenario created where the federal government's not doing their job to bring manufacturing mm -hmm. back. Really? <laughs> right? Shocking. Right? Yeah. Private sector is now recognizing the fact that they've got to start doing some things to bring manufacturing back. You can bring manufacturing back, but if you don't have the skilled workforce to enter that, that industry right. and right. work in manufacturing, you're going to nothing gets solved and the problem stays. So we're trying to, as a magazine, as a website, social media, we're trying to educate the industry that, hey, this is a very, very viable very, very good industry. It's also a very vibrant industry. People don't understand it until you begin to walk around here at Fabtech and look at what's manufactured. And I always remind people we're on the radio show, I said, look where you're standing, look around you, look what you're wearing, look what you're sitting on, look what you drove today, how you got here, whether it was by bus or taxi or car or SUV, everything around you has been manufactured by somebody. Absolutely. And if you want to look at creativity, if you want to use, look at really using your gray matter, it's this industry. It's problem solving. It's cognitive skills. This is where all the new, cool, and exciting stuff is. The R&D. R&D is in manufacturing. Absolutely. Right. So, to your point, if all you have to do, specifically when you talk about metalworking, is look around you every day. You leave your house, in your house, no matter where you go, and no matter what you pass, everything's made of metal. Yeah, true. Uh, and true. there's a lot of creativity in what you see if you're willing to look. Right, that's right. And then to take, to take it a step further, Tim, based on what you just said, if you come to a show like this and you see the technology that's going on. Oh, wild. These companies aren't sitting on their laurels. These guys are getting after it. But at the end of the day, they can come up with the greatest things and the greatest technology in the world. But if there's nobody to employ, it right. doesn't mean anything. Yesterday, Tim and I did a walk the floor, and we stopped over at one of the booths, and they effectively had a holodex environment where you wear glasses, and you were in a machine, and you were riding in and out of this machine, and then they have another program where it, it is like a holodex, where you walk into a room, you got four floors, a ceiling, and a floor, and there you are in Star Trek. Uh, I mean, some of this stuff is just so far out there, and it, 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 they're all kids that are working in these companies. They're all young people. Yes, they are. Uh, which is great. Uh, Tim and I, st I mean, I'm from the metals industry. Uh, we, we produce and sell uh, steel forgings. And this all came about as a means to, again, I'm doing this 50 years, and Tim is doing it 25 years. Uh, we did this partly to educate our customers about what's going on. I mean, we're, we're dealing with a lot of major OEMs and also uh, ma and pa shops. And, you know, we, we still have customers that when you want to send them a fax, you have to call them up, tell them to turn your phone off and turn your fax on so we can send them a quote. That's true. Now, now that sounds almost archaic, but that was only 10 years ago. So uh, we're, we've learned a lot also, and 
uh, we're happy to bring this out to the marketplace and bring in people like you to help support well, it. Well, I appreciate it because people need to hear what's going on. Here's another point. The majority of the businesses in this industry are family owned and they're very small businesses. That's very right. true. They need help. Right. You know, they can go to the banks are, are, and become very, very stringent in the loans that they're, they're offering. Right. Uh, people's livelihoods. They're putting everything they've got into what they're doing. They right. go home at night. They're not watching TV. They might be, but they're also working. Oh, it's not a nine-to-five job. Uh, their livelihood depends on it. Their, their children's future depends on their business. Um, and it just seems like, I don't know if manufacturing for years was taken for granted, but again, I go back to the statement I made earlier that this people need help. And they're not, it's not, it's not a situation where they're not working. They're working hard, but they need help. They need the environment surrounding them to be able to do their jobs. And if you give them that support, that mindset recognizes it, it turns on, and they're ready to get after it. That's, that's exciting. Let's talk a little bit about FF Journal and yeah. the content. You're writing to a younger, a younger reader, and the perception is that the younger reader is reading it on their iPhone. You tell us different. We've done surveys, Tim, that show that 75% of all readers prefer print over digital. Um, and I, I, I think that being, being in publishing as long as I've been, I think it's a human nature thing. I think that people like to be up close and personal. There are, there are times in the day that you can't be in front of a computer. Or maybe you don't want to be in front of a computer because right. you've been on that computer all day. Magazines take you away from that. They're close, up close, personal. They allow you to navigate, I think, more effectively mm -hmm. than a computer. Um, yes, we are focused on the younger generation, but we've also found that the older generation still in this industry, they've had to adapt in how they get information. Right. So, yes, we're publishing for, a, for the next generation, but we're also recognizing the fact that there's an existing generation that's older, you can't discount them. You've got to include them too in terms of what's happening out, what's happening from a, how do you get information out? How do you get it out there? So, I'm sitting here thinking and saying, this gentleman has two publications, we have a radio show, and we're talking about how we can get kids more involved and the parent issue came up, and you know, maybe there's a, a, a joint campaign that we can go after parents. That's an interesting concept. Article in your publication, combination with us, put it on the show, uh, and get the parents. Because we went to an event at uh, Manufacturing Day, and uh, we were talking to people there about parents, and there were some parents there uh, that probably got sucked in to go down by their kids, <laughs> You're right. uh, right. kicking and, and hollering. But I, I think. I think that there's a weak link there, that the parents want their kid to go to college whether he's good for it, not good for it, he, he doesn't want to do it, he'd rather hang out with the guys and uh, sit around and smoke joints or <laughs> do beers or whatever whatever the teenies are doing nowadays. But I think it's a, I think it's a great idea to put together some kind of joint effort. I've never heard that idea and I think it's pretty darn good. We'll have to talk about it off air. Uh, well, and look, anything that we can do to further recognition, awareness of what's really happening, because how many candidates on both sides of the aisle have addressed manufacturing? I think it's two so you know, far. Maybe? Well, none of them last night. Right. Uh, actually, debate. Rick Santorum made a comment and one other, and Rick Santorum was actually here yesterday. Unfortunately, we couldn't get him on the air. Okay. But uh, Mike Huckabee was the other one, but not near enough. Yeah, this is 20% of the GDP of the United States, and as was pointed out yesterday, somebody says, "Well, that's only one fifty of the economy." Yes, but it's the tenth largest economy in the world right. if you lay it up against other world economies. It's it, a big piece. And it wasn't the services number. industry that built this country; it was manufacturing. Absolutely, right. and we got to get back to that because if we're going to move forward and compete on an international scale, this country has got to get back to bringing, making manufacturing a friendly, business-friendly environment where people can thrive and be proud of what they're doing. And, 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 and the end result is that it's, it's evident that they're contributing to the, to the benefits of this country and the success of this country. Right. Well, Got to bring it back. 
well, we, we need Congress to get back on their right horse. and Their uh, right mind would help. Maybe the right mind would help <laughs> also. And get XM Bank finally passed after 80 years of successful operation. They just don't want the other guy to win. But Lewis, here's the problem. How many politicians have been in the private sector? Yeah. Well, well, you know, well, you got a bunch of Muppets up there on, on Capitol Hill who, who don't know business. They're more concerned with lining their pockets, with money and power. And uh, at the end of the day, I think the majority of them could give a rat's you know what about what's going on in this country in the private Great. sector. They claim to be helping with tax reform. Uh, That's a joke. Yeah, as they lay 89,000 new regulations on the industry last year alone. I mean, come on. Who benefits from that? And who can keep up with it? Who can keep up with it? Yeah, they're killing the industry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Maybe yeah. there's only eight or nine, and somebody in the media made it 89,000. 89, <laughs> well, and it's up to, look, that's the, re that's the reality. It's up to OEMs, it's up to publications, it's up to people like you. I love the parent idea. I, that's, a, that's an angle I have never even considered. If you can somehow get the parents engaged in the process, educate their children. Sign the contract. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, it's a win-win, or you hope it's a win-win for everybody. The more people you can get engaged and recognize what's really going on, the media is not going to cover this. It's not sexy. It's not doesn't, exciting. Doesn't it bleed. Not. And it doesn't, right. It's it doesn't exactly bleed. Right. Absolutely. Well, Michael, we are going to follow up with you throughout the coming year. We're, we're, going, to, to we're going to look at doing some things with, with FF Journal, with Modern Metals, with your company. Some partnerships with you. We're very excited about what you're doing. Like the magazine. Thank think you. Fix it fits it's a great niche. Thanks. We appreciate you being on the show, and we're going to we're going to be working with you quite a bit in 2016. Well, and we I look, would certainly hope. We look forward to doing as much as we can do to get you guys out there, get you guys familiar with our readers. Uh, you look at our circulation, the pass along, we're reaching a lot of people in this industry. Clearly they are. need to be aware of what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, it's on us to change the mindset of manufacturing Absolutely. in America. It's not going to happen anywhere else. That's it's right. up to us. So I, I really appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity. No problem. It's been fun. We love really it. appreciate it. And we, we will be talking. That if I see an article about parents in your magazine before we talk, it's not I'll gonna be happen. really pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. Don't worry. Tim, thanks a lot. Michael, thanks thank for you. having me, you guys. Really I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Thank you. That wraps us up for this episode of Manufacturing Talk Radio. Thank you.